In Australia, our variable climate is one of the biggest threats to farm production. In this video, we'll look at some of simple approaches to using our knowledge of climate risk to improve our farm outcomes. One fairly easy way to assess your climate risk is by using a risk table. Here we're using a single plus sign to show one unit of profit and a minus sign to show one unit of loss. The equal sign means a break even year. This table shows high market prices and a good season give the most profitable year. That's shown by having three plus signs. Medium prices and an average season give a lesser profit and low prices in a poor season result in a loss. Okay, this is not telling farmers anything new. Of course your assessment on how many plus signs to put in each box may be slightly different for your farm. Now if we think about the probabilities of each event happening Historical figures might show that the probability of high prices has been 25% of the years, medium prices as 50% and low prices as 25%. Similarly, if we think about the historical figures for the climate in our district, we might see that we get a good season 30% of the time, an average season 40% of the time, and the remaining years are poor, 30%. Now we've got actual figures to use, so we can work out the probability of each cell in our table. We do this by multiplying the two factors for that cell together. So for the top left cell, we multiply 25% or 0 0.25, times 30% or 0.3 and get 7.5% or 0.075. We can complete the rest of the cells in the table in the same way. Of course, all the cells added together should give 100% or 1 because all of the possibilities are shown here. What we've done is calculate the odds or the probability of getting any one of these particular cells. So we can say that the probability of having an average year and high prices is 10% or 0.1. Now that we've calculated the odds of our possible outcomes, we can use this information. So let's look at an actual example. Imagine you're a livestock producer and the Southern Oscillation Index is indicating a 65% chance that the next three months in your district are going to be dry. You're looking at the ch choice of carrying on normally or selling half of your usual sales stock early. If you carry on normally and the season turns out OK, you expect a net income of $20,000 from the stock sales. But if the season turns dry, it's going to cost you $10,000 in feed, lower growth in your stock and poor lambing rates so your expected net income is only $10,000. Let's assume for simplicity that if you do sell early and it turns out to be the right decision, your net income will be the same as if you carried on normally in an OK year. However, if you sell early and it turns out to be the wrong decision, then you'll have costs of $15,000 and end up with only $5,000 in net income. 
Let's look at the possibilities here. Here's the possible outcomes and the probability of each outcome. Remember we said the SOI was indicating a 65% chance that the next three months will be dry. So that means there's a 35% chance it'll be okay. So our carry on outcome, weight it for the probabilities of the poor or okay season, are shown in the as expected benefits. Our carry on outcome is $20,000 times the probability 0.35 plus the alternative which is $10,000 times the probability of that 0.65 and we get 13500 We calculate the expected benefit or the outcome weighted for the probabilities for our change decision in the same way and we get $14,750. We can see that the outcome is better for what we call the change or the early sale outcome and this will give us confidence to go that way. Of course we don't have certainty that this will be the better outcome but we have more confidence that it is the right decision than we have in carrying on as normal. Now we know that climate factors don't operate in isolation. For example you may have a lovely crop experiencing a good season and still get hit by a frost at a critical point. Here's an example of a study done by looking at the combined effect of rainfall and temperature on wheat yield. We can see that as rainfall increases so does wheat yield as we would expect. We can also see that the green dots representing lower temperatures growing seasons are clustered in the lower yield end of the graph versus the red dots representing a higher temperature growing season. This is a good example of rainfall and temperature operating together to influence wheat yield. So how do you use this on your farm? Well I think the message is pretty clear. Get good information and try to get estimates of the probabilities of seasonal outcomes. Add this to your information about markets to improve your decision making.